Hi, it's True at the Full Setup here, back with another video, and today I finally have my new graphics card, and it's just come in the post. I've got an AMD RX 480. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the specs now. I'll show you it um, in the unboxing, um, and also at the end of the video, just because I know you're going to want to see the product, I'm going to actually tell you why um, I'm still not 100% whether I'm going to send this graphics card back or if it's going to go in my PC downstairs, um, and some general thoughts um, about it before I've even used it, just from what I've already seen already read and view videos I've already watched on YouTube anyway let's get it unboxed so here we are for a closer look um, and it is going to be a reference model because there was no no non reference at launch but my reference model is by gigabyte um, I paid what did I pay 220 pounds with delivery next day um, just when I've gone to get the specs of this board um, up on the screen in front of me um, they're already selling some of these for like 250 I've just seen one going for 275 so that's an absolute ripoff so there we go but I've gone for the Eight gigabyte version, the four gigabytes just sold out like instantly. Um, I think they're pushing the eight gig more. I've got the RX 480 HDR, AMD FreeSync, DirectX 12, and FinFET 14. So this is their new FinFET. They've done two gener generational um, jumps in um, in the uh, chip size, um, and this is also running the new AMD Polaris. If you haven't heard about Polaris, um, well, I don't know where you've been, but there you go. We've also got the Radeon RX 480 logo by Gigabyte. Same again on that side, same again. What have we got here? Just a few little bit of specs. 8 gigabyte GDDR5, which is 256 um, uh, bit. It's got an 8, I think it's running at 8,000 megahertz memory clock um, as well, with a base clock from, is there any stuff on the back? It's got a base clock of 1120, boost to 1266. So apparently you can overclock these up to like 1.5 gigahertz as well. Um, so that's very good as well. I think it's 32 computing units as well. Um, that this processor, um, that this GPU has. So on the back as well, we've got about premium VR, premium technology, gamer optimized. I think everyone's going to get a standard box. Um, as for power usage as well, you can, for a gig, for an AMD card, you can run it off a 500 watt power supply. How good is that? It's absolutely wicked. Um, also, it's got 2,304 stream processors. Sorry, I'm. Um, this video has come a little bit quick. I only ordered this last night and it's come like first thing this morning. So let's see what's in the box. We have the card. Now, I'm not a fan of black and red card. I'm not a fan of reference cards, but I will try and, you know, tell it for what it is. We've got loads of pack foam and that's about it. No driver discs and just, yeah, that's it really. Just some different standards manual. That is all you're getting. Um, it's probably just been, you know, they just really wanted to get this out, launched loads of people, they just wanted to get loads of cards out, so let's have a look, it does come in an anti-static pack as well, have I got my tape measure, I better get my tape measure because you're going to want to know, you're going to want to know the measurements of this aren't you, just want to see the card Troy, just want to see the card, then I want you to benchmark it and I'm going to ask you to do me loads of gaming videos five minutes after I've uploaded it, yeah I know what you guys like, so we've got this plastic on the outside which you remove, so this is the reference cooler, um, which they are saying, you know, it is, you know, it's a very premium finish, you know, they're sort of saying, you know, it's based on almost like what their Fury sort of cards look like, they brought out, we've got the six pin power, the Radeon Gigabyte, you know, it does look all right. I'm just not a fan of the black and red. Although I am going to build a black and red PC soon, so instead of just doing white and white and black, so there's some variation. And we've got the blower, which um, goes in on both sides. Again, you know, I can't wait to see the non-reference models um, that sort of have like the two fans on it. But these are very good when you're doing like Crossfire or Nvidia with SLI. They hope to get the air. And as you can see, quite a short PCB as well. This expands off the side of it, so this is very small. For an eight gigabyte card very small and then we have the ports here i'll do the measurements in a minute so we've got hdmi and free display ports as well so i am going to struggle with this a bit because i don't have a monitor that handles display ports so i won't be doing any 144 hertz gaming um it is probably just going to have to be um you know uncapped frame rates with tearing in my videos or yeah, cap it to sort of 60 hertz, PCI Express 3.0. So I'm just going to take the measurements of it quickly. So the card measures in length 
24 centimeters, just over 24 centimeters. It should fit in most cases. I imagine there's going to be ITX versions of this coming out very soon. Doesn't really protrude the PCI slot that much as well, so you're going to definitely be able to put it. Um, it's definitely going to um, fit for people who are using a bit more low-profile cases or media center cases. How long is the original PCB on this? Yes, 18 centimeters. This should be an ITX champion, I think. I think we're also going to see some really nice ITX small form factor versions of these cards. Right, let me just tell you my final views on the RX 480 and on this card from what I already know about it. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that, you know, I might not even be keeping this graphics card. Like, I'm probably not going to keep it as a permanent fixture in any of my two PCs here. So... Why is that? You know, what is it? Well, firstly, it might go in my lounge PC downstairs. Um, and the reason for this is basically um, it's only got display ports for the output. My monitor is 144 Hz, 1080p, but it's only got DVI output now. Uh, DVI, dual link, everyone says via these adapters, still generally will not get you up to 144 um, Hz. What you need to do is buy like um, an adapter, which is about £80. Now, soon I've already paid £220 for the graphics card. Um, then you put £80 on top. Um, you know, that's 300 pounds. You know, I'm only like sort of like in the next few weeks, I'm probably only 70 100 pounds off getting a GTX 1070. So, you know, I'm not going to go and buy that adapter. So, that's more I'm thinking if I keep it, it goes downstairs. Also, you could say, well, why don't you just buy yourself another monitor? You're always buying new stuff. Well, I said, I didn't want to upgrade past 1080p this year. I'm looking at next year. I can't really justify buying a 1080p 144 hertz monitor with a display port for over 200 pounds um, when my graphics cards cost over 200 pounds. You know, I'm starting to borderline on the venture of buying a 1080, which I can use on the monitor that I've already got. So um, that's the sort of reason. Also, as well, um, I know this is um, the card is aimed at VR for the masses. Um, if you're an American, you've just pay $200 or for a 4 gig version or slightly more for an 8 gig version maybe you've got an inflated price at launch everyone does but that's absolutely brilliant and that is VR for the masses um, but in the UK we pay an absolute premium on import tax then we get charged VAT we get ripped off when we go to work basically we're just getting screwed over all the time oh and then um, loads of really idiotic people have decided that it's a good idea for us to leave the euro um, so now we've paid an even more inflated price on the graphics card um, I've even seen them already selling for 260 275 pounds with delivery that's not VR to the masses um, and finally the last reason is the performance side of things AMD mmm now they said it was as good as a 390X or a 980 it was gonna keep up with these graphics cards that's what you were getting for $200 well actually it's only as good at the moment from what it's showing as an overclocked 970 um, now, and you can buy an overclock 970 in the UK at the moment for slightly less than you can buy an RX 480 um, because obviously they're slashing the price because everyone needs to get rid of all of their stock, um, especially before the 1060 comes out. I'm sure they want to sell those 970s off. That being said, I do think once we start getting non-reference models um, that come that come out um, and with AMD um, start updating some drivers, I would see this graphics card is going to surpass the 970 in performance. We know that NVIDIA, and included this is the 970 because it's been out for a while, but NVIDIA like to go in quite high when they release new products, like real high performance products, loads of drivers for it from day one, but then they take a while to get to the cheaper stuff. AMD like to just go in quite aggressively price point you know sell sell loads of cards put bums on seats you know what I mean get them into everyone's homes but then they don't start sorting their act out on the drivers to a couple of months later so I'm sure once we get a few more driver updates um, we will we will have more performance but you know that's what we've done it's supposed to be a cheap graphics card and at least they've actually made loads of them like you can buy them they're not sold they're still not even sold out today the next day and they they have been selling a lot I've seen the stock numbers drop so there we go that's sort of my reasons, just how I'm feeling about the 480 for now. But um, most importantly, I've got to test it out. I'm going to get it in my system. I'm going to get the drivers going. And if you want to see benchmarks on that, please go over to my channel. And if you like these videos, please subscribe.